Walk away from the Tiff Bell light box. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> All right, so uh, we are we are live, everyone. So welcome and thanks for joining us for our Zoom Q and A. Jake Horowitz, who is the writer, producer, director. Um, welcome, Ooh. and <laughs> and then we have Jane Lauman, who's the producer, and next to her is David Hewlett, who is playing um, Michael Burwell, and then Mark, Michael Burwell's daughter, we got Neem Wilson. Oh, sorry, wait, my, how am I pronouncing your name? Is it correct? Uh, it's, it's pronounced Neve, like with a V. Neve. Um, Neve. Neve. Yep, I, this, I couldn't explain the spelling to you, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I just wanted to check, because. Yeah, of course. I, I, yes. Um, and then we got Dylan up top, who plays Cole, Dylan Everett, and then Stephen Joffe, who is playing um, uh, the character uh, Austin Avery. Um, and his name as well. He has a last name. Do you have a last name? I didn't know your last name. <laughs> I only learned that because I watched an interview on your character, so. <laughs> so oh, I, I yeah, just, I need to watch Not one of us did. That was back when they had last names. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I'm right. not sure we cleared the last names. <laughs> Ix, they are the Avery. Okay, okay, so I wanted, my first question was for you, Jake. Um, this is your labor of love. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, how it was germinated and how long it took to get to this point here. Uh, yeah, it was... Um, I feel like my answer changes in every interview. Uh, having said that, I've had like one interview, so I would just have to check again. Um, but I, I feel like it started, um, I definitely started writing the script like well over seven years ago when um, I really had no other ideas other than like a screenwriter and it's a script about a screenwriter because that's really, you know, the kind of original idea that you have. Um, and then so I sort of worked on it on and off. Uh, and then finally, uh, about uh, three years ago, I, I would have finished it. Uh, 2017, I finished uh, writing it. And then um, it got into the Berlin Film Festival as part of this pitch program where I met Jane over there. Um, and we decided that we were gonna make this movie. Um, and that would have been in early 2018. Um, when we then, uh, brought David on board and Stevie and then Neve and Dylan, um, and we shot it in the summer of 2018 and it has taken that long, uh, to get to this point where now everyone can see it. Okay. Amazing. Um, Jane, when you met Jake, <laughs> what yes. did you think of his premise? Oh, I loved it. I loved it. I, I mean, I love really well written, uh, really well thought out characters and uh, dialogue and um, I could visualize doing it. And uh, like, I can, for me, like I don't only have to want to tell the story, I have to know that I can make it happen. And so, you know, it's, it's limiting in some ways, but it's also freeing in others because I can read a really great script and go, yeah, someone else is going to make a mint off that. This one, I just, yeah, I loved it. And uh, Jake charmed uh, me with his persistence. Uh, and he... Uh, he just, stalked he, you. Didn't he stalk you? Well, I think that's a little unfair. <laughs> Didn't he, like, like, you stalk, <laughs> yeah, he stalked you? He stalked at Berlin. Uh, just like in the movie. <laughs> sounds like a familiar... Sounds like a familiar character. <laughs> um, he shows yeah. up at our house Write now. what you know, right? <laughs> Write what you know about who you know. Um, yeah, I mean, I, honestly, I was focused on another project and Jake was like, can't we just shoot this now? And I'm like, okay. He kind of, he, he definitely led the... Let's put it together, whatever I can do to help because uh, I knew it was going to be great. <laughs> and it is great, and I'm so proud of it. So, yeah. Jane recently told me that uh, I will often do the opposite of what people tell me to do. 
So I think as soon as people said, yeah, you probably shouldn't make this movie, that was when we decided we were going to make it. Yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. We did the same uh, thing. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, a non-cliche way of your character. My character? Uh, not based on me. Well, oh, not, sorry, not, not your character. Sorry, your, your screenplay. <laughs> Sorry, I, I we, you, I you cut out there. there. Yeah, <laughs> your downtown oh, internet oh. sucks. <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry, it said unstable. <laughs> um, yeah, no, what, filmmaker. <laughs> what made you what made you want the, the cliche? What made me something something cliche? was all I got. Oh, I what, what made you what made you want to quash the quick cliche? Can't oh like yes. That. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that's a way better question. <laughs> I it wasn't because I don't like those movies because actually I sort of really like the movies that this was uh taking the cliches and upending. I really always like those little uh, sort of romantic comedies that you find on Netflix late one night or whatever and then just can't help but watch the whole thing and it's 3 a.m. and you didn't realize you were going to watch it. Uh, I've always loved those movies and so I wanted to do something that was like that but um, obviously my own take on it which is sort of commenting on it and subverting it and you know I, I used to make I made films since I was like seven years old and I think the thing that they always were was like taking other film because I'm not very creative, honestly. So I just uh, I just take the other things that I've seen and I like trying to find a new take on it because that because that way I don't have to think of anything new really. Laziness is the answer. Short answer. Oh. <laughs> okay, we'll take that answer. A quirk of vision. Um, what's the hunt? A quirk of vision. Uh, just a, a new take on it. <laughs> the Jake yeah. perspective. Yeah. <clears throat> a distinctive voice, isn't it, Jake? Um, He's the voice of a generation. <laughs> we just don't know what generation. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I wanted to ask um, Dylan, what, why does your character like Haley, in your opinion? Why does he like Haley? Um, I think he likes what she represents. Uh, which is an opportunity to, uh, you know, manifest his own destiny. Um, you know, even if that means being toxic and destructive. Um, at least I think that's how it starts. And I think as he gets to know her more, he starts to see her as a real person and not, you know, a prop or, uh, you know, a storyline in, in his, my, his mind sc uh, script, so to speak. So, um, yeah, initially I think it's it, it's it's out of opportunism to be quite frank, and then uh, you know as he starts to spend more time with him or with her rather, um, yeah, I think that starts to change. And, and uh, Neve, um, why do you give Cole so many chances? Your character. Um, He's just so adorable. Look at this smile. How can you not? This one? Or that one. That one. <laughs> um, uh, I mean, it, the, the film kind of dives into it a little bit later on in, or, I mean, more towards the end, end of the film when Haley talks about, you know, doing stupid things over and over again and it being called addiction and that she's addicted to people. And that's... I mean, that's obviously the main reason why, but I think also like, I, th and this is just my like performer take on it because it was never explicitly written in the script and I don't know if Jake feels this way, but it almost feels like um, Haley might see a little bit of herself in Cole and, um, you know, she finds it sort of endearing in a way. Like when she kind of, that 
that conversation that they have about you know her letting him follow her and you know planting um like little i don't know like little facts or you know constantly posting where she is like she she also has a plan in mind and i think she she likes that he has a plan even if it it, it isn't necessarily from a genuine place um so maybe it's just, maybe it's that she recognizes a lot of herself in him but also mostly i think it's the addicted to people thing uh, also your character is very um knowledgeable about her own self mm. too as you mentioned and um in terms of roles for females um do you find that there's more that are more like kind of unapologetic um and, and taking ownership or do you feel like what's your take on this kind of role do you think there are more out there like this um yes it's all it's always a hard like question of I always, I always struggle faced with these questions a little bit because I've never really, um, I've never really like identified with, you know, female roles, but like as um, a person who is like, you know, obviously fem like women, woman presenting um, and those are the kind of roles I get hired for. Um, it, and as someone who is still like up and coming and not really like in a position where I can choose um, choose roles, luckily I, this I was very sorry. I'm just going to turn on Do Not Disturb. <laughs> um, uh, with this role, I was really fortunate that I was approached and that you know this was something I really had a choice in and it was something I actively like wanted to be a part of. Um, but whether or not these kind of roles are available, I think yeah, I it's it's whether they're you know portrayed in in those big blockbuster films that's a different thing not all great scripts get funding um in fact most great scripts don't get funding um and a lot of really wonderful narratives for a huge range of people don't get funding um because that's unfortunately the way that the industry works um but i still even um I think Jake infused a lot of, uh, a lot of, um, I don't even know what word to use, but like he made Haley a, a strong character and then to elevate that was like a, a part of my job as well. Um, and I'd like to be able to play more characters like this, but it's really a question of whether or not they kind of come your way. I think a lot of scripts, get written with really well-rounded and like really hashed out characters for for all types of people but whether or not they make it to screen is is another is another issue gotcha um we've got a question from kayla what was the funniest scene to film p.s it was on my bucket list to meet dylan everett because his role on degrassi and Impacted something, so I always wanted to say thank you. <laughs> okay, so I guess that's up for everybody. What was the funniest? There are there are so many funny scenes. I don't know how you guys would choose, but anybody come up with? Uh, I mean, how about, are we talking how about, about the scenes themselves or the experience of filming? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, of I think I think she. Can, I think Kayla means. I'll just take it as she means the funniest to film uh like on set like something that funny that happened i mean i'm just gonna take i'm gonna take the the lead on this because my most vivid memory from filming was i think it might have been my first day on set and i was i was filming on another um another production at the time so i was like going back and forth between um working on another film called random acts of violence and then zipping on over up to aurelia um, and I think it might've been my first day of filming and it was the scene at the swing sets. And, um, there's like, at the end of the scene, me and Dylan walk away, like holding hands or like with his arm around me or something. 
and we like started walking. We had just done like, we had done this scene so many times and we like, were like, yeah, that was like such a great one. And we're walking away and like, I put my arm around him and we both like trip in the sand and like eat shit. <laughs> like, it was the cleanest take. We had done about 20 yes. takes. It was hands down the cleanest take. And Jake was like, just don't fall down. And I could not help but fall down. <laughs> yeah, no, that was, uh, that was a, that's that was a, a good, I, that's something I honestly think about quite often um, mm -hmm. and was so embarrassed about, mind you. I didn't seem, I had, not only was it my first day on set, but also like me and Dylan had worked together before, but I hadn't seen him in like, Five or like six or seven years. Yeah. Like, great. This is my first experience <laughs> back on set with Dylan Everett. Like, yeah. Great. <laughs> it's always a treat. No, the only time you fell down. Oh, pleasure. Um, uh, I'm gonna have to say I have a contender on that. I literally <laughs> made eye contact with Dylan Everett for seven seconds as he squeezed an entire bottle of mustard into his mouth. And then chased it with a full glass of M and M's, um, and I, that was not written in the script. The process, that was, baby. Yeah. I was gonna say that'd probably be the same one for me, man. That day of filming was just the wild west. It was just yeah. cool. At a certain point, we had everything we needed, but not everything we wanted. And Jake really just kind of let us off the leash with uh, with actors like me and Dylan. That's a really awful idea because we will yeah. literally eat the scenery and we did um and I, I i think we lost some of the best takes because everyone on the set was laughing at the time so i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna toss that in there although the idea of you two face planting into a bucket of sand i is can't awesome. believe you didn't see that stevie that's important you missed <laughs> i think I that was actually the the um, the mustard followed by the ketchup not what not having any ketchup in it i think that was james the editor's favorite shot in the movie oh and yeah i bet the yeah. ad lib of Last oh year. thank god when you went with the ketchup <laughs> as well and it didn't work we were all thinking no we can't <laughs> oh I, well one thing i was used to hearing on the set was well that was an interesting choice that's so he, he ate the mustard probably five times that it, of course yeah. we used the sixth take when the, there was no mustard left <laughs> did you actually was that really mustard that you yeah, yeah like i said we were we were just on set and we were just kind of just coming up with things to do things that we thought would be funny and you know jake was kind of just the voice of god behind camera like do this do that try that and i just kind of go for it and one take he was like grab the mustard bottle so that and was like my picking it up and being like I, oh, what's i'm gonna i'm gonna contest like, that there's the mustard in your mouth and i was like commit Oh, and I went for it. Hitting. I'm going to contest that. I, 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 I do not subscribe to the narrative that Jake told you to eat the mustard. You did Dude, You're supposed to be on no. my side. You're my I best friend. Absolutely oh, I absolutely on your side. I agree with him. I did. did. My, my question, you made that I choice independently. My question was, how much was improvised? Because I, there was so much great dialogue, like with the crazy quinky dink funny Haley-isms and just every, there's just so much. I just wondered what, how much was improv, improvised. Well, I think- Too much, says we, Jake. Yeah. Um, I think we, we all tried to skip, like stick to the script, you know, as much as we could. I mean, the writing was there, right? You know, nothing needed to be improvised. Um, everything kind of, you know, I, what, what needed to be said was being said. Um, that being said, uh, there were certain days where, yeah, we'd be doing certain scenes and, you know, luckily Jake is this kind of director where he allows that kind of freedom where he's like, yeah, try something, see, you know, give me something, see what happens. I was like, okay. One of my favorite one lines. Take, I'd like go up and I think I did like a little Nikki impersonation for one take, for for one scene. And again, Jake comes around the corner. He's like, that was an interesting. interesting choice. Yeah. And then, you know, so I, I'd get away with some stuff and, and we'd have fun. But um, yeah, for the most part, you know, I think, I think we were all pretty, pretty contained. Okay. But one of my favorite lines, which is a Dylan improv, was um, when he when uh, Haley pulls the keychain out of the macaroni and uh, uh, and he says and he's talking on the phone. He says, "I don't know. It's a keychain and a bowl of macaroni. It's got to be something good, right?" Um, I think the trip to Miami, something like that. Uh, 
Uh, <laughs> and that was just the perfect version of Dylan insulting the stupidest thing in the script, which was that whole <laughs> keychain. <laughs> so it worked, yeah. It was fun, yeah. Okay. Awesome. Um, so there's a question from Jenny, and, and she said, for both Neve and Dylan, what was your favorite part about working alongside one another? Uh, well, I mean, luckily, you know, for me and Neve, we, we've had built a rapport prior to this movie. You know, we, we've had the privilege of working on, you know, two or three projects leading up to this. So, I mean, I kind of knew what I was getting into. It was part of the reason why I wanted to sign on to do the film is because I thought that that chemistry would, would be there pretty much right away. Um, so, I mean, I don't know. I, you know, I'm such a huge fan of Neve and, you know, I'm going to sit here and blow smoke up your butt, but uh, I, yeah, again, I, I knew what I was getting into. Uh, I wanted to work with Neve. I wanted to work with Jake, uh, working with, uh, you know, uh, Stevie and David. I mean, really everybody. So, um, yeah, I was, I, you know, I was excited. It was, it's like, you know, seeing an old friend, right? You know, it's, it's just going to be a ton of fun. A uh, good experience for everybody. In that phase. Well, <laughs> um, that's great that that was your experience. But like, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, honestly, I was really more into it because Stevie's the lead singer of my, one of my favorite Toronto bands. And like, really, that's the only Oh, thing. cool. Um, <laughs> wow, cool. Um, I'm kidding. I'm totally kidding. Um, working with Dylan. Yeah. You're, a, you're a little oh, bit. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> they always are. Um, in reality, though, um, mm -hmm. working with Dylan, he is a, like, a really respectful partner and is, I mean, I'm just going to say it. There's clearly a sex scene in this movie. <laughs> And that what? was where I know. Um, I mean, maybe you got yours censored. I don't know if you have like parental controls on your computer. Um, but you got ours <laughs> censored. Oh, <laughs> yeah. well, mine wasn't censored because I'm fun and hip. Uh, so uh, I cut out my sex scene, so I'm not happy. <laughs> <laughs> um, the director's cut. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Exactly. I just happened to get that one. Um, but that was. I mean. It's the, I've been working since I was four and that's the first sex scene I've ever done in my life. And uh, no one I would have rather done it with Aww. than Dylan Everett. He is a lovely man <laughs> great person to work with. And just Thanks, also babe. like, if there's anyone who gets like so deep into their work, it's Dylan. Very like, really, really like, goes in, so. Thanks. So this question is for Stevie. Um, oh, no. You always call Cole on his bullshit. <laughs> um, you try. And what is it about Cole that keeps you trying to be friends with him? You say you value his friendship and you give him chances also. Uh, I think part of that is encapsulated in a conversation that happens in kind of our last scene together that I'm, Cole is also playing his own game. Cole has a big crush on uh, whatever your name, Austin, let's say. Um, and yeah, I, I, I have a lot of love for him. We riff off of each other. I don't know if there's anyone that you've written with or that you've created with, but that you just have this immediate synchronicity and that every idea tends to create a hundred more good ideas. And that's kind of what these two have together. And I think at a certain point it becomes, uh, becomes romantic for my character. Uh, and yeah. And, and, and I, I think I always believe that the quality of our work together and the way that we can lift each other up will bring him back to me in the way that I need. Uh, and that, that never, quite happens. But at the same time, I think a lot of time in love, the things that most frustrate us about our partners are tied very closely into the things that we love the most about them. So I think the, the very stubbornness and, and hard headedness and idiocy that this character has is tied into what makes him such a genius. So it's, it's very difficult for my character to divorce those things and, and a lot easier to forgive them. 
Okay, I have a question from Facebook. And do any of you experience um, someone trying to get close to you or trying to get close to someone else in this opportunistic way through another person in this industry? So I, they're trying to say, does, does the plot of this conniving guy who's trying to get ahead in the business, has, has that happened to you in real life? Well, Jake only asked me to produce the movie because he knew that he could get David to be in it then. <laughs> I didn't even know that you knew David, so. <laughs> oh, well, that's, <laughs> that's what I've been telling you, buddy. No, because of me, yeah. That's my narrative. <laughs> um, no. Uh, I, I can't I can't really speak to any specific instance in my life. I think it does ha it certainly happens. It happens a lot in music. Um, but there's no there's no isolated incident in my life that I would say like when I read this script, I was like, oh, it's like it's it's like fucking Tim. He did that. No, I did I didn't have that experience. I swore. <laughs> Um, I used to go hang out at Book Soup in LA in the hopes of running into uh, Sinead O'Connor. Really? My... <laughs> yeah. yeah, good choice. My... choice it was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. Barely. Damn. Yeah. Um, I used to go hang out in the science section. I heard you look at the sciencey stuff. So, yeah. Please. Um, yeah, no, I, I, nothing comes to mind. I don't know. I don't think I've ever been in that position before. Like I've never had that much power where I could, where I was like, oh, I could, I could take advantage of this. I'm, I'm too much. <laughs> I, can get you a I think they're yeah. saying so much. I'm just, happy to take to, I'm just happy to be there, man. Really, like I don't want to take advantage of anything. I'm just, yeah. <laughs> um, I would be lying if I said it hadn't happened to me, but in the same breath, it feels a little self-serving to say so. Um. But not in, like, I've had other, you know, Toronto actors who, you know, I've maybe become acquainted through, through, through the industry that have definitely latched on to, um, you know, they see my resume or that I've been working for however long and then they're like, oh, like, so, you know, this casting director or this casting director? And I'm like, really, I don't pay attention to that. Um, and also, like, I don't have any persuasive. <laughs> what, what is this connection going to do for you? I, I, I'm still struggling to find my own work. Like, how am I going to? Can you introduce me? It does to happen. It's oh, okay. and <laughs> Like, who I'm, I'm like, I'm trying to introduce myself to people. Like, I don't know <laughs> who you think I can introduce you to. Uh, but truly, it, it, was less so in the industry and, and more so through um, personal connections uh, growing up. Um, because I was fortunate enough to be, and Dylan as well, uh, working in high school, um, it made the kids go like, oh, that's that girl that's on TV and, you know, maybe I should be friends with her because she's on TV. Um, she can then choose me to Dylan. <laughs> Pardon? She can introduce me to Dylan. You introduce me to Dylan ever? I mean, like maybe, but he is a reclusive man. Yeah, I was gonna say, dude, you gotta come find me. I'm in the back <laughs> cave right no, now. Your, your background is so not the You'll never find me. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, I think anyone who's, like, worked in film and TV has exposed to, has been exposed to, to some level of, of that, um, even minuscule, but it was less so, it's been less so in the industry for me, more so just in high Maybe school. not even consciously, you know, I think a lot of it, you know, can happen on a subconscious level too, right, so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be better at calling myself out on my own shit, and I, I think I've definitely done it. I don't think I've done it in like a one degree of separation where I'm trying to get close to someone so that someone they're close with. But I think I've definitely tried to cozy up to people of a higher level of success than me. Again, in music mostly, in hopes that when a tour comes up or another opportunity along those lines comes up, that, that I'm on their mind. Um, and I, I think I've definitely 
stretched friendships farther than they would naturally have gone uh, for self-serving reasons. So yeah, I'm, I'm the guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the worst. I know. That's part of the industry though too, okay. isn't it? I mean, part of the industry yeah. is trying to push any connections you've got. I mean, any, whenever you work with a name of any sort, the first thing you say when people say, what are you working on? You say, I'm working on a movie with so-and-so. Like, I mean, it's, <laughs> so in a way there's that whole, it's like building on other people's reputations all the time, right? What you were know? you doing when we got shut down by COVID, David? <laughs> I like that you said so and so instead of David Hewlett. Yeah. That's <laughs> yeah, I mean, of course, we play up what we I hate you. do, I guess, to some degree. But, um, yeah, the same. I'm a, I'm a terrible, like, I, I just, I'm impressed by stars. I, I can't help it. I'm like, when I, when I meet movie stars or I see movie stars, I'm like a little kid. I, I just get like, oh my God, like, I've seen you on TV. Like, it's like, it's, you know, I, so yeah. I, you know, David, I, we get it. You've met movie stars. <laughs> <laughs> Not as many as I have, though, Jake. It's true. <laughs> oh, it's true. She used to interview them. <laughs> In my past life, I was a journalist for E! News, so yeah. I, I have interviewed <clears throat> famous people, and I always found it really actually uncomfortable that I would do all this research on somebody because I knew I was interviewing them, and then I would meet them and I, I would be like, this is a completely unlevel playing field. Like you have no idea who I am and I know what you had for and breakfast I know this morning everything. and right. where you went to high school. And it's just a really odd way to meet somebody for the first time is, oh yeah, yeah. They're like, tell me, the, tell me a story about something. And then I'm like, I could correct you on that actually in, in such and such an article it says. <laughs> so, anyway, it's, uh, yeah, it's a, a weird world. I look forward to all of these marvelous talents being huge celebrities that I can say I worked with. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, this, is, this is a brilliant cast and I wonder who, who helped in the casting process actually. Was it Jake or was it you or was it a combination of both of you? Jake said, I want that person and I called their agent. <laughs> Well, that's, that's simple. <laughs> that's easy. Well, I think we were very lucky to sort of get everyone that we want that was perfect uh, for the roles. Yeah. And that just came from us knowing their work and thinking that they would be a good fit. And in some cases, uh, letting them try something new. Uh, in Eve's case, letting her kiss a boy, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, uh, if anyone has like followed my work or been familiar with my work it's that I'm not often playing a straight woman um so yeah and it's also like it's interesting as being like as being sort of a quietly queer woman myself like playing you know a fairly stereotypical straight girl in a movie is like <laughs> it's an interesting experience um well <laughs> Um, I meant to ask, so, um, did, like, I, it almost feels like your character calls Cole on certain signs about him sort of not making the moves. And that kind of, like, leaves a little bit of question about, like, what Cole's all about in that respect. Yeah, yeah. there's definitely, um, I'm trying to think of the specific like touchy on yeah, she's like Haley's always like kind of one step ahead of Cole. Like he's got such a like a, a um, such a hashed out plan for you know how this relationship's gonna go, and then you know she initiates the first kiss, and Haley initiates you know him coming over um, for the first time, and 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 stuff like that, and calls him unexpectedly, and he's like, "This is not where I was going <laughs> with." this this is not this wasn't i wasn't planning this but it's great um and then you know there's a couple times where she's like S -s 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 like what are you doing <laughs> and it does it definitely i think points to his um he's sort of on the fence his 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 ambiguity maybe ambiguity yeah um and then actually i was curious about um when he said to you, I'm just not, what was the exact words? I'm not that way or something. He wasn't clear, was he? Um, this is a spoiler alert, by the way. 
So I believe he says, um, I'm just not written that way. It's not who I'm meant to be. See, I know it word for word because I was unified. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm just not written that way. It's not who I'm meant to be. I can't have that standard happy ending with you because I'm dot, dot, dot. And then uh, audiences can fill in the blanks with what he uh, was going to say. Uh, Dylan is probably the only person who knows what he was going to say because I told him on a day. Uh, <laughs> but, but it's, it will it's, not tell you now. <laughs> no. Dylan is playing Mario Kart. He's no, I'm, just, I'm not going to hold your hand through it. Yeah, I think you should. That's exactly it. Part of part of the experience is 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 kind of filling in the blanks, right? I mean, yeah, I know what Jake's interpretation of that. I know what the character says. Um, and I mean, if you can, you know, pick up the breadcrumbs here, I think it's a it's a fairly obvious conclusion, um, and it ties into everything you know and it's it's that exactly thing you know it's Cole struggling with his identity and that's a part of it and uh he's just wildly uncomfortable in his own skin the the really interesting thing about that though is that like like you said Dylan you know it seems obvious um but since the movies come out uh, earlier in the month I've gotten like very I've gotten lots and lots of people messaging on social media and uh sending messages to the uh, Facebook uh, and Instagram pages are, are in some cases finding my email and emailing me. Um, but a, a lot of them, almost all of them ask, what happened at the end? Where did he go? Uh, and then my answer is usually, uh, well, what do you think? And it's pretty much 50-50. Many people think that he got up on stage uh, to go kiss Haley, which, you know, rude. She's in the middle of the show. Uh, <laughs> I, never that. <laughs> I like that that's a fan theory that I love that yeah so there's no <laughs> right and then the other half said and then the other half say that they want him to go to Austin although they say that Austin deserves better and then there are a few people <laughs> my grandmother who watched it and fell asleep for all of it and then when I said, what do you think happened at the end? She said, I think he got up to go to the bathroom. So. <laughs> well, by that nice girl he'd taken on a date, buy her a drink for a change. <laughs> like, yeah, you just, that's, that's your new website. It's just grandma reviews. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I've done it. I guess it's obvious to me because I had the writer of the script tell me what happens in that moment, so. <laughs> <laughs> that, you're, you're, uh, it's the inception yeah. of rom coms, if you will. If I was to, <laughs> yes, that's it. You're the Christopher Nolan yeah. of no, I guess if you had to say, I uh, fine, I'm the Christopher Nolan of rom coms. <laughs> sure. Um. Okay, so I just want to gather everybody and ask if there's a couple, if there's time for a couple more questions. Are you guys all good for a couple more questions? Sure, yeah, man. Um, I think people might Ian be hasn't curious. Drink yet, so we're okay. Hassan hasn't finished his gaming yet, so I think we're okay. Oh, okay, you got screen time. <laughs> I've got a party to go to in five minutes. Uh, okay, five minutes. No, I'm kidding. Nowhere to go. Oh. <laughs> I thought you had a Zoom party or something. This is a Zoom party, right? <laughs> to do tonight? Like, let's be real. <laughs> yeah, who has plans? Yeah, ooh, I gotta, you know. <laughs> I, gotta go. I gotta hang out with my... I gotta bed daughter. early. <laughs> um, okay, so I was curious about the music. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, the singing, Neve. Did you? Were you? Was that you singing? Uh, like what? What? No, it was not me singing. I actually, um, when I was younger, I could sing uh, really well, and then even though I don't have them, my balls dropped, and uh, I lost my singing voice. <laughs> uh, <I do>. for, <laughs> pardon? <laughs> What'd you say, Dylan? I said me too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> But no, I was not singing in the, in the film. Um, Jake found uh, a lovely singer who did all the recordings for the film. I uh, did, I was lip syncing. Um, I mean, at the end, I mean, Jake has said this, or said this to me at the premiere of the Hamilton Film, film Bust, but that they almost used the audio of me like singing at the, at the end. Um, it was really good. I was there. You sounded great. Uh -huh. 
mm, I'm gonna tell you right now, no, I wasn't. <laughs> um, I, uh, uh, no, but I think it, I mean, like, I was, I was singing them for obvious, like, so that it didn't look like I was lip syncing, but then that at audio was, uh, didn't cancel them. They, they filled it in with, um, the singer that did all the recordings for, uh, for the film. Um, Everyone asks, though. That's a good sign. Yeah. Which is good. Yeah. It's uh, good that you're asking if I'm the singer because that means it passes, which we love. You start telling exactly. people yes. Yeah. yeah, I did it. Honestly, yeah. I should. Hey, I should. Um, what's, what's the name of that singer who sung those? Just so we can. Yeah, exactly. Her, her, her Amazing. Her name's Julia name is Gartha. Julia Gartha. And actually, uh, we have a, a Spotify playlist with most of the songs in the movie, including her, uh, her songs, so you can find her that way. Okay, yeah. awesome. Awesome. Um, and then, David, I wanted to ask you if Stevie also is yeah. a singer in the movie, although in a separate role, not as Austin, but uh, he very kindly, he, his band, the Bird of Bell, Birds of Bellwoods, very kindly let us use three tracks, I believe it was. I think yeah, I think um, we bargained you down to three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe or maybe persuaded you into three. But yeah, no, it was uh, it was fantastic. Uh, Jake, along with being having a very good ear for dialogue, has a very good ear for music, and he had some artists he really wanted to include. And Burns Bellwoods was one was on top of that list, know. and Wake Owl was another one. Um, and actually, the the the, the central force behind Wake Owl, is that right, Jake, is Colin Cameron, who actually was the composer of the whole score. And then we have Stacey Kaniuk and Tommy Green Jr. How do you and, remember all this? Well, I've written out those credits a million times, but now movie. that we've said that, I'm going to forget somebody. Lowest to the low. Is there anyone else oh, yeah, that I'm forgetting, Lowest Jake, that was on our soundtrack? I think that's it. Stevie's band. Yeah. Wake Owl. Yeah. Julia, and then, yeah, <laughs> Stacy, Tommy, Lois, right? Yeah. <laughs> nice. uh, shout out to the, the music talent that often gets sort of not that much um, recognition in, in a film because... Um, well, it's so much a part of this movie. Though. Oh, yeah. Uh, but yeah. the music, it's just such a, it's such a sort of integrated, it's so, yeah. you know, it really, they really brought it alive. I mean, it's great. Yeah, absolutely. And <laughs> Yeah, I've been bringing out a lot of forms recently, which is the unfun part of the producing job. And one that I had to do recently was asking me to, uh, uh, to say, did we use any recorded music in in the film? And how much of it was Canadian? Like, you know, five, ten percent. And I was like, one hundred percent. That's what we love to hear. Yeah. <laughs> Cover of the very famous Joni Mitchell song. Yeah, right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So. Very, very awesome. I mean, that's what First Weekend Club is all about, is promoting Canadian film and um, hoping that uh, more people get to discover gems like these because um, it's important for us to support our homegrown talent and to nurture it and to also spread the word. Like, this, this film was amazing. We're gonna, you know, tell people about it. Um, if you enjoyed the film, please also let people know and share uh, how they can see the film. Um, actually, I was curious to ask um, you all here, if you can name a Canadian film that you really enjoyed, just, um, I know this is like an on the spot little, um, <laughs> Un unprecedented question, but uh, if you can think of a Canadian film that you'd like to recommend to uh, uh, whoever's watching, Wet Bum. Yeah, Wet Bum oh, is lovely. Yeah. Yes. I, I auditioned. I had three callbacks for Wet Bum when I was a kid, and um, oh my gosh, I'm blanking on her name. But the girl who got hired is the man. Sarah Stone. Julia Stone is so perfect for it. Yeah. it that's a great, <laughs> great film. Good recommendation. Anybody else? <laughs> else? Well, my go-to is always the F word, um, <laughs> which clearly influences film. And um, I will, I was very happy to that uh, it was called the best Canadian rom-com since the F word in one review. Yeah, so, That was my favorite. Thing to read. I just watched Pontypool, which I quite like. 
Witch, mm -hmm. right? Pontypool. It's like a. It's like a. It's a zombie movie, but it's all set in a radio station, so you never actually see the zombies. It's kind of love that. Really great. <laughs> yeah. um, firecrackers. Oh, that's great. Great film. I watched that. Uh, I finally saw it not even that long ago, a couple weeks ago, and it was so, yeah. so good. Oh my god, I love that movie so much. Yeah. Um, and most recently at TIFF, uh, this was the first one that came to my brain. Um, Black Conflux. It's oh, done by yeah. uh, a, a Ryerson University graduation graduate. Um, and uh, had the ending of it is really like, is just perfect. The, the, it did, did a really good job. Um, it struggles with a really difficult narrative and, and um, they really ended it on a good note. So I would recommend that one as well. Those are Women Who Love Giraffes, I like that too. Yeah, that's a great doc. It's a great documentary, Women Who Love Giraffes. Oh yeah. <laughs> I was really surprised because it just did not seem like my thing at all, especially given that my recommendation was a zombie movie. You know? <laughs> I have to say Cube, too, because just, well, for Vincenzo. Yes. just for Vincenzo, I have to say Cube. Yeah, if we're talking classics. I mean, the reality yeah, is... Old is, classics. If you're going retro. The reality is, is there are a lot to choose from. Yeah. Like, I've, you know, yeah. there's giant little ones. I love that you don't know anymore. Giant. I love that you don't know that they're Canadian. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, well, it's a Canadian film. I'm like... All I've been in is you, you know the minute they're not Canadian, though. If that, you, once you see the budget like past a certain point, you're like, oh, this is this is not a Canadian film. <laughs> well, well, I think David Cronenberg is the uh, occasional exception to that. Say, that, even, a, that, 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 that even counts as a Canadian. I mean, he's a Canadian icon, but he also gets. <clears throat> David, what qualifies as a Canadian film now? Does it have to be made by a Canadian filmmaker? What do you, how do you sort of, how do you gauge that generally? Um, yeah, I think the key creatives have to be Canadian and the funding has to also be Canadian. Right, uh, right. Majority. It can be a co-pro and still kind of count, but yeah. Mm -hmm. um, oh, what, oh, what was the other one we really oh. like? All right, if we're okay. still going, I'm going to okay. talk about uh, Bang Bang Baby is a wonderful kind of like horror comedy absurdist picture. Uh, very, very strange and beautiful film made by Jeffrey St. Jules. And then there's a short film, and I'll mention this one, because one, it's like nothing I've ever seen. Two, it was made by a wonderful friend of mine, Emily Jenkins. And three, it's a short film that's available online. You can go and you can watch it right after this. It's called Terminally in Love. The entire piece takes place from POV. Uh, it's like a, a real, it's very masterful filmmaking. And it's not only are you in this person's eyes, but you're in their mind as well. It kind of follows the, the narrative structure of a, of a dream or of a, of a person kind of spinning out or dealing with a, a kind of anxiety disorder. And, and they really managed to capture that. Wow. What's that revenge okay. movie? The one that the hotel. So I, I want to thank you guys all for coming and joining us. Um, we should be a family discussion. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> please talk about yourself. Yeah. Usually we're quicker on being each other's, finishing each other's sentences, but I can't think which movie it is. Yeah, thank you for doing this. This thank is you, amazing. Yeah. I mean, this is, I just, like, it's that, it's that rising, you know, was it the rising it's tide, tide. Lift, lift, lifting all boats type thing? I just, yeah. I think it's great that we can, you know, have someone like you supporting this stuff. It's, it's, yeah. it's fantastic. We get that yeah, well, That's, that's what we do. That's what our mandate is, to support all Canadian voices and make sure that, people get to see the films. So mm. yeah. Um, yeah, we really appreciate you joining us. And um, uh, I'm okay. So <laughs> um, oh, yeah. I, I'm gonna let you all say your goodbyes and I'll maybe start with Jake and then go down. So I'll go Jake, go Jake. <laughs> uh, goodbye. Uh. Uh, thank you. You know, I, I, I really appreciate it. Um, our whole festival run was canceled, obviously, as yeah. were many films. So it's really nice to be able to talk about, uh, to be able to talk about it and share it with people because a lot of people just don't even know that it exists. Uh, I really enjoy getting messages from people of all ages. I got a retired mailman sent me an email today saying how much he enjoyed it. Um, <laughs> And that's, it's, you know, it's very nice to see all kinds of very different people like it. And as a, as a comedy writer, there's not much that I can do sincerely. Um, but I think that 
it's so important to, I think now sort of more than ever, comedy is really, really important. And I wish that we supported more comedy in Canada. I wish that more of it got made. Uh, a lot of the time, really talented comedic writers and directors will just go to the US because the Canadian system for whatever reason doesn't support comedy. And I think it's very important to laugh and be able to enjoy something that can make you laugh and make you uh, sort of appreciate something that you wouldn't usually. Uh, that's, that's my thing. Okay. And David and Jane. <laughs> Uh, well, I, yeah, I mean, I'm honored to be here. I'm thankful to everyone on this screen that we are here. And uh, it was uh, it was a fantastic experience that I look forward to repeating uh, again and again, maybe with slightly more resources, but not too much more because like it just makes you all the more creative. Mm -hmm. And I think we're very thankful to Crave for their support too, for um, taking it on and, written and being just like, they were champing at the bit to play it out. And I, we just kept saying, can you hold on just for this festival? It's gonna play, it's gonna play. And then of course it didn't. But yeah, they've, uh, so they've been amazing and look forward to working with everyone again. And thank you for supporting us with this. Well done, Jake. <laughs> well done everybody, yeah. but you know, yeah, it's, I'm, it's, I, it's always amazing to me when we see, when films get finished. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like it's just, There's just so many things working <laughs> against you all the time. And, and it's just so great to see, you know, this film happen and, and to, to get to do stuff like this. So yeah. I get to work with all, all these young kids, all, these, <laughs> all this young talent. Yes. <laughs> Before everyone else gets to speak, I want to selfishly say that if you like this movie, I have a movie coming out in November, my next movie that's nothing like this. Uh, <laughs> so uh, please watch oh. it called Cup of Cheer and you can follow us on social media to find out about it and it comes out soon and we were lucky to shoot it before uh, the whole world shut down. Wow, okay, we'll look out for that. And um, Dylan? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I think those guys just said it. Thank you so much for being a part of this. Uh, thank you for, for watching the movie, giving it a chance. Um, you know, thank you, Jake. Thank you, Jane, Steve, uh, Stevie, Neve, everybody involved in this. I mean, it was a great experience to film it. I love reliving it. You know, I love talking about it. Um, I'm glad that people are responding well to it. They're enjoying the film. Uh, there's no better feeling, really. Um, so, yeah, just really grateful for everybody. Thank you. Yeah, buy the movie so that, that Dylan can afford electricity. Yeah. <laughs> it's getting bad. <laughs> I'm just like, the walls are gonna start to bleed in a minute, sir. I need to get out of here ASAP. <laughs> Stevie. Uh, yeah, I yeah. think you guys said it great. It was a pleasure to uh, work on this film. It was a pleasure to work with these wonderful people. Thank you for your support. Thank you to Crave. Um, also, there's something uh, very special and crazy happening in the world right now. And I think we would be really remiss if we didn't bring this up uh, as we, kind of specified we would before this conversation started. Uh, yeah, I, I've been thinking a lot, as I imagine we all have, seeing what's going on in the States and reflecting upon the history of our country about kind of racial inequity and disparity in our film industry. Um, I don't have answers because I'm an actor and I think a lot of the time in my history as an actor and someone who feels very much there on the bottom of the totem pole, I often think that there's nothing that I can do about it. Uh, no way that I can be part of an effective change. But I think as long as we keep playing that role and not bringing these things up in conversation and not asking hard questions to people in positions of power, then we are obviously contributing through our silence that's very much the conversation that's happening right now and I think it's self-evident so I think it's kind of on all of us to to reflect uh, I've realized that the amount of film that I take in where the creators are from a different racial background than me is startlingly small um, when I looked through my brain and tried to think of a Canadian film that I loved to bring to the surface, uh, all of the posters were of white people.
people exclusively. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not because those films don't exist. Those films do exist and they're phenomenal films and I haven't okay. seen them because I haven't sought them out. And that's on me. Um, so I don't really know where I'm going with this, but I, 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 I think we need to talk about this before we sign off. I think we'd all regret it if we didn't. Um, it's actually a, a really good I just I just want to interject and, and uh, when I, I saw the film and I saw the cast of characters, it's pretty evident that everyone here is from uh, a white background. Let's put it that way, right? And, and being somebody who, you know, I try my best to, to give voice to those who don't have normally the voice. Um, like I, I personally like to seek out um, and bring those voices to um, the forefront. But I, I did have to say it was so lovely and so refreshing because I did some research and I found out that there was a man in the United States who just happened to be of um, a black color and he thoroughly enjoyed the film and he went on at length about how much mm -hmm. he enjoyed the film. And I thought, okay, so first thought, okay, wow, it's a really white film. But it's second- like Golden Belt, the Golden second, Belt guy. So, yeah. Second was when I, when I researched and found that, I thought, you know what? Universal stories are universal stories. And I love that he loved that film so much. And that's why I thought it was important to talk to you guys. So just want to bring that up um, before. Um, and then Neve, if I can let you sign off uh, with your oh, thoughts. Yeah, and also just to tag along with um, what we are talking about, um, I spent the day at a, at a march actually in my hometown today um, for the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, and I am from Oakville, Ontario. I'm from a really white town and um, I have actively benefited from my privilege, not only um, in just everyday life here, but I started acting when diverse, there wasn't an emphasis on diversity in 2002 the way that there is now. And I truly do owe my entire career to the pretty much the color of my skin and the fact that I was fortunate enough to, you know, be cast as that cute little white girl in, in all of these movies growing up. Um, and so acknowledging that would be, what, not acknowledging that would be, would be wrong of me. Um, and I do agree uh, with you, what you said about um, universal stories are universal stories. And, you know, we're, I'm incredibly lucky to be a, a part of this production, whether or not um, it is a, an incredibly diverse or not. Um, it was a great story and it was a great set to work on. Um, but, it's a whole can of worms to open and it is more than I have time um, to get into. I would just like to say, if you're watching this live stream, please find a, uh, a, a place where you can donate. Um, whether you're in the US or whether you're in Canada, find, uh, it's very easy to find them. There is tons of them. And a lot of them are really like, they're easy to find. Um, do your research and uh, please, I hope you take this time to, to think about, if you are a, a white person, think about, you know, how you have privileged, how, we, how you are privileged and how you have actively benefited from that. Um, and that I'm, I'm thankful that you are all here to listen. So uh, yeah, if, if you're watching, you know, use your voice and, and if you have the means, please donate to, to a charitable organization, so. Uh, to that point, you can find on our Instagram story uh, places to donate. Um, there's also a good website to Stevie's point uh, called Film in Color. Color is spelled the Canadian way, .ca. You can check out a bunch of really cool films by uh, people uh, of different diverse backgrounds, really interesting films that you wouldn't normally uh, get a chance to see. And cool. also, if you go on the First Weekend Club uh, website, I, you will, and you look at a list of the films, there are a lot of great, great Canadian films. If you, and now they're easier than ever to see them because they're available on GEM, they're available on the, uh, on YouTube, like, so, and Netflix and Crave and all, like there's so many avenues in which to see these films. So if you don't have funds to donate, at least um, support artists 
in that way by watching the results. And um, Absolutely. thank you all for, for all your words. And um, and yeah, we'll have to have you come back and have some more chats another time soon. I love that. Thank you Sorry, so guys, much. Just to interrupt, just before we do yeah. jump off here, I do think this is a great opportunity. And I think Stevie said it and then and, and Neve spoke about it. And I just, I feel like I want to, uh, you know, what? Oh no! We... <laughs> that was a cliff. <laughs> oh no! We... <laughs> we lost him. Oh that no! Was a very unfortunate maybe, time. Maybe he'll. That's, that's like the end of who you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! It's, it's, it sounded like it was going to be so good too. Um, uh, he does that all the let's time. see. He has a really good impression <laughs> feeling. You could maybe just end that if sentence. If that was intentional, that was the best trolling I've seen in yeah. my entire life. <laughs> no, there's no one. I don't know. As you know, in comedy, timing is everything. Exactly. Oh, uh, on your site, you have, a, you have an a, update you have a, here. Do you have a specific section that we can find, um, sort of indigenous and 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 um, um, yeah. people of color making films? I mean, is that what's the, is that? Oh, uh, so uh, we did. Previously, when we had a different, um, what well, I'm not going to get into that. So just, just um, not currently, but we uh, we're thinking about potentially doing that. So that's a great idea because it's, it's funny because I, like, I I I struggled to think of anybody. I mean, I, I and that's that's not a good sign, right? Well, I mean, that's Indian a terrible horse, sign. Which was amazing. Right. right. Well, the indigenous films Fantastic. I can think of, yeah. yeah. But 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 speaking specifically to to you know. Well, there's to, a great festival, isn't there? The Caribbean Tales. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, no, so, it's, it's but it's yeah, amazing. just visit firstweekendclub.ca, and you'll definitely see a whole lot of diverse films. Uh, and Canada. Yeah, if people have suggestions. Let us know because I'd love to. Yeah. I'd love to. Know. I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, this is all. All of this is so. I mean, it's it's such a weird thing to speak to, or to have to speak to, or to not know how to speak to. I, I don't know. How to speak to this stuff? I wish I had the confidence and the bravery that you guys do. I, I, I just don't. Um, I'm, I'm terrified. Don't how to, I don't know anything other than I, I feel at this point all I can do is just ask people to help me learn and and figure out what I can do because I, yeah. I just, um, you know, yeah, yes. it's 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 a it's an odd position to be in because I understand that you know the silence is violence thing and 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 you know, you want to show support, but at the same time, you, you also don't know what to do. And I, and I, I find myself floundering on this and it's, you know, um, yeah. so anything I've, anything people have got any suggestions for, for films and, and some ways of supporting, that'd be fantastic. I mean, you know, so says the old white okay. guy. Uh, <laughs> no, I think that's great. Again, David, and I think the more we, like we, we are, our somewhat insular community comes to know the incredible talented voices of those community, the more we're going to find sets, that reflect the same mm. diverse background that our country does. Mm. It's uh, I'm 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 really excited to see what this, what comes well, what comes out of this in terms of the world as a whole. Um, but but also I think that uh, the the lockdown for the in in terms of the industry I think is is certainly for me and our company and what we're doing and where we're going and what we're making. It's been an opportunity to sort of hit pause and think, okay, what do I really want to say and what do I really want to do? And I'm, and I'm very important. hopeful. And what's what's important because we've tried in the past to make films that we've been frustrated in our attempts to be more diverse and 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 reflect a a world and in one particular case the future that we, I mean, it seems the like a no brainer that there's no there's no singular race in the future. <laughs> like we're just there's still a business know. to it, and the business unfortunately the, the, the can marrying, work against that a it's, lot. It's it's, it's very insanely frustrating. frustrating, and I really hope that uh, when the industry starts back up again, it will everyone will have had the time to absorb the change that needs to happen. I like to think it will. Like I like to, to think that that will yeah. be something that because that yeah. seems like an easy change to me. Like that seems like yeah. something that can happen. Yeah, you know, I mean. Changing and, society is very difficult, but if you can start with the arts, I think that's a great yeah. way to, to get out there. I mean, you see these fantastic, wonderful actors I, out there, yeah. you know, addressing this stuff. I personally, I personally, yeah, I personally have, have, 
I have been with uh, First Weekend Club for about six years now, and I have seen a change. And I have to say, the films in the last year, even the all the different voices, it's very encouraging. I just ask you all, anybody watching, and all of you who have a voice, um, please let other Canadians know. Make it your job to let other Canadians know about what amazing diverse voices we actually do have that just need to be discovered. And that's mm. it. So yeah, so I'll leave you all with that. And thank Dylan's you. Dylan's trying to join back in. He is just texting me. I'm sorry, I wasn't rudely looking down at, you know, my friendly text message, but Dylan was like, do I come back? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I think you should let him come back and finish his thought. I would, I would, I would like to for him. <laughs> Okay, let me just make sure that we have uh, have the time. Mm. Ah, yes. <laughs> let me just find out. Uh, I think he was about to announce that he was Batman. Uh, <laughs> and that that was his, his little cave. I've been telling you guys he was Batman since day one. <laughs> uh, I thought it was Superman. I mean, Spider-Man. It's, uh, yeah, it's interesting, David, to, to speak to the, the, the business element of, of it, because, yeah, once again, it's, it's this difficult thing where we, at least not the people on this panel, we don't necessarily see ourselves as the people in the position of power to be able to take the reins and change that. And I have that same hope, right? I hope that when we come out of this time of reflection, that we will witness that change. But I also, I'm starting to ask, like, I can't fucking trust people that I don't know who are clearly benefiting off of the current situation. It's working great for them. So I can't, I can't expect them to change, but I can expect myself to change. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm very lost in terms of how that manifests, but I'm, I'm doing, I'm doing the work. And I, I think that's, that's maybe where it's, well, it's happening. It's happening. Yeah. Like movies, movies with, with black stars are making money and that will yeah. speak to the industry in a way that would never you know, the, it's unfortunate, but that's what it comes down to. I think, I think Anna, sorry, we need to jump in. <laughs> um, I think that we have, to, I, I have to wrap it up, but yes, um, I, I, I feel like this is a discussion that deserves its own yeah. podium. And that, yeah. You know, potentially a panel, a panel that has different voices um, yeah. who could speak to those voices might be appropriate and and that we give it that what it deserves in that sense. Yeah, yeah I'll stay in the audience Thank on that. Because, yeah, because we, you know, that, I think that deserves that. So, um, so I'm gonna say goodbye to all of you. All right, thanks thank again. you much. Thank you so much for everything. Thank you, thank you so and, much. Um, we'll have you all back. Fantastic. <laughs> okay. Thanks so much. Bye. Cheers, everybody. Bye.